Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. on a Saturday, June 10th, 2023. And welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we have no sponsors, no hidden agendas, and no BS. But we do have the news, so let's get to it. In a landmark ruling, a U.S. federal judge has ruled in favor of the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. This was in their lawsuit against UKIDAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, or DAO. The lawsuit alleged that the DAO offered unregistered commodities, challenging the widespread belief that decentralized finance entities are beyond regulatory scrutiny. The judge was William H. Oreck and he found that UkiDAO was operating an illegal trading platform and acting unlawfully as an unregistered futures commission merchant. As a result, the judge ordered UkiDAO to pay a penalty of $643,542, cease its operations permanently, and shut down its website. The lawsuit was originally filed in the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of California in September of the previous year. The CFTC alleges that UkiDAO was offering leveraged and margined commodities transactions to retail customers, all without observing Know Your Customer laws. In January, the CFTC requested a federal judge to rule that the DAO had violated federal commodities laws after they failed to respond to the lawsuit by the deadline. However, the judge dismissed that request. Despite never formally responding to the lawsuit, UkiDAO did restrict access to its platform from the U.S. after the lawsuit was filed. Now, this case is important because it sets a precedent that DAOs can be sued as a singular entity rather than the government needing to identify each and every member and then serve that member. The judgment establishes other DAOs could be held liable for legal violations as a person under the Commodity Exchange Act. More, the court found Uki violated the law as charged. This precedent may open the door to future actions against DAOs and decentralized exchanges. The CFTC's enforcement director is Ian McKinley, and he said that the founders of Uki DAO created the organization with the explicit goal of operating an illegal trading platform without legal accountability. He warned this decision should serve as a wake-up call to anyone who believes that they can continue to circumvent the law by adopting a DAO structure intending to insulate themselves from law enforcement and ultimately putting the public at risk. Multiple amicus briefs were filed on Uki's behalf. They argued that DAOs should not be treated as a singular entity. They said that the government should have to individually identify and summon each member of the DAO before the case could proceed. The CFTC issued an enforcement action against the decentralized trading platform back in September. With the intent to stop Uki from allowing retail commodity trading of digital assets without registering with the CFTC. UkiDAO did not respond in court after multiple summonses were issued to them electronically. The court found Uki civilly liable for operating an illegal trading platform and unlawfully acting as a futures commission merchant. As a result, the exchange has been ordered to cease doing business in the United States and has been prohibited from doing business with any entity registered with the CFTC. That could include non-U.S. companies as well. This order also directs UkiDAO to take down the website, preserve documents, and notify the CFTC of any additional website controlled by or on behalf of UkiDAO. The DAO also has to pay a civil penalty of over $640,000. The CFTC emphasized that in a precedent-setting decision, because the court held that UkiDAO is a person under the Commodity Exchange Act, and that means it can be held liable for violations of the law. Now, this case was unique, marking one of the first times a government agency's gone after a DAO and its token holders. Before this case, the prevailing belief held by many industry players was that DAOs and decentralized finance platforms were mostly protected from regulatory scrutiny due to their decentralized nature. The CFTC's victory in this case is significant. It sets a precedent for future actions against DAOs and decentralized exchanges. It establishes that DAOs can be held legally liable for their actions and that they can be sued as a singular entity under the Commodity Exchange Act. This could potentially open the door for future actions against DAOs and decentralized exchanges. The case also highlights the importance of regulatory compliance in the crypto industry. Despite the decentralized nature of DAOs, they are not immune to legal scrutiny and they can be held accountable for their actions. This serves as a reminder to all entities operating in the crypto sphere to ensure that they're in compliance with all of the relevant laws and regulations. 
This case against DukiDAO marks a significant development in the regulation of DeFi. It sets a precedent that DAOs can be held legally liable for their actions, challenging the notion that they're immune to regulatory scrutiny. This will have far-reaching implications for the crypto industry, potentially leading to increased regulatory oversight and enforcement in the future. It serves as a reminder to all entities in the crypto space to ensure that they are in compliance with all relevant laws and regulations. Moving on to regulatory actions in the crypto world, we turn our attention to Nigeria, where their Securities and Exchange Commission has taken a significant step against a major crypto exchange. And now I'm going to take just a minute to ask you to like, follow, and subscribe to the podcast. It's a huge help in getting new people to listen to the show, so thank you. Binance was ordered to stop its operations in Nigeria. This directive came from the country's Securities and Exchange Commission. The Nigerian SEC made it clear that Binance Nigeria Limited is not registered or regulated by the commission. If true, that makes its operations in the country illegal. This order came on the heels of a lawsuit filed by the U.S. SEC against Binance. The U.S. SEC accuses Binance of failing to register as a broker or exchange and selling unregistered securities to the public. Binance is the largest global crypto exchange in terms of market capitalization. The Nigerian SEC previously stated that it considers all crypto assets to be securities by default. However, this is the first time the regulators take an action against a major exchange platform. In May, it was reported that the Nigerian SEC was processing applications for registration from crypto firms on a trial basis. However, the official registration process will not begin until an arrangement has been reached with the country's central bank. In Nigeria, central banks are not allowed to offer services to cryptocurrency platforms. This is part of the regulatory environment that crypto businesses have to navigate in the country. The Nigerian SEC promised to provide updates on further regulatory actions concerning Binance Nigeria Limited and other similar platforms. The commission also said that it would collaborate with other regulators in Nigeria to provide further guidance on this matter. This situation highlights the regulatory challenges that crypto exchanges like Binance face in different parts of the world. While cryptocurrencies offer a new way of transferring value and have the potential to revolutionize various sectors, they also pose regulatory challenges. Governments and regulatory bodies around the world are grappling with how to regulate this new asset class while ensuring that consumers are protected. In the case of Binance, the company will have to navigate these regulatory hurdles in Nigeria and other countries where it operates. This could involve registering with the appropriate regulatory authorities, complying with local laws and regulations, and working with local financial institutions. The outcome of these regulatory challenges will have significant implications for the crypto industry as a whole. For anybody who loves crypto, this is a crucial time. The decisions made by regulatory bodies like the Nigerian SEC and the United States SEC will shape the future of the industry. These decisions could either facilitate the growth of this industry or stifle it. Therefore, it is essential for anyone interested in crypto to stay informed about these regulatory developments. Now, shifting our focus to another development within the crypto space, we bring you news from my popular trading app, Robinhood. Apparently, they've made a decision regarding the support of certain cryptocurrencies in response to those legal actions. And this is our cover story for tonight. Robinhood, the popular app for trading stocks and crypto, announced that it will stop supporting three of those cryptocurrencies. They are Cardano, Polygon, and Solana. This decision comes in response to recent legal actions taken by the SEC against Binance and Coinbase. The SEC accused both Binance and Coinbase of offering unregistered securities, including Cardano, Matic, and Sol. These allegations have created uncertainty around these tokens. And that uncertainty prompted Robinhood to remove them from its platform. The support for these tokens will officially end on June 27th. Gensler wins again. Robinhood's decision was announced in a June 9th update. That announcement was further explained in a Twitter thread. The company said that the lawsuits against Binance and Coinbase have cast a shadow of doubt on the future of these tokens. These were the only three involved in the lawsuits that Robinhood supported. Despite this setback, Robinhood remains optimistic about the future of crypto. The company expressed its commitment to advocating for clearer regulations in the United States because that would allow customers to participate in the crypto market more confidently. Dan Gallagher is a former SEC commissioner and is currently Robinhood's chief legal compliance and corporate affairs officer. 
In a June 6 congressional hearing, he testified about the challenges of operating as a registered broker dealer in the United States. He described the SEC's path for crypto firms as difficult to follow, even for Robinhood. Even for Robinhood, which seems really weird, given that they are well versed in complying with the SEC from their work with stocks. Oh, and they have a former SEC commissioner on staff. So why is this different? Operation Choke Point 2.0. That's why. Gallagher said that when SEC Chair Gary Gensler invited crypto firms to register in 2021, Robinhood complied. The company went through a 16-month process trying to register as a special purpose broker dealer with the SEC. However, in March, Robinhood was informed that the process was over and that their efforts would not bear fruit. The SEC's lawsuits have sparked controversy among crypto users. They've criticized the regulator's inconsistent approach to dealing with digital asset firms. For example, the SEC's lawsuit against Coinbase alleges that the exchange has been operating as an unregistered security broker since 2019, even though the company went public in April 2021, which the SEC had to sign off on. So why would they approve this IPO if Coinbase's actions were illegal? Simple, they're not. Operation Choke Point 2.0. Robinhood's decision to end support for Ada, Matic, and Sol is disappointing and is a significant development for the crypto world. It highlights the ongoing regulatory challenges faced by crypto firms, as well as the need for clearer guidelines from regulators. Despite these challenges, Robinhood remains committed to supporting the future of cryptocurrencies and advocating for regulatory clarity. Continuing with the theme of changes and challenges in the crypto industry, we turn our attention to Crypto.com as it too announces a significant decision regarding its institutional services in the United States. In the world of crypto, changes are constant. One such change is the recent decision by Crypto.com to suspend its institutional services in the United States. This decision took effect on June 21st. It was driven by a lack of demand from institutional customers, which is a situation that's been worsened by the current challenging market conditions. Crypto.com made sure to inform its institutional investors about the suspension of its service well in advance. Despite this change, the company's retail mobile application and platform continue to function fully in the United States. This means that American retail users can still access cryptocurrency derivatives trading regulated by the CFTC. They can also use the exchange's up-down options offering, which lets users take long or short trading positions on the future movement of various cryptos. While Crypto.com has decided to spend its institutional exchange in the United States for now, the company is open to the possibility of relaunching it in the future. In addition to this development, Crypto.com has also received an official major payment institution license. This licenses them for digital payment token services by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. The license allows the company to offer its services in Singapore, further expanding its global reach. As these last two stories have shown, the landscape of crypto exchanges is constantly evolving. Companies like Crypto.com make strategic decisions based on market conditions and regulatory environments. Despite the challenges, these companies continue to innovate and adapt, demonstrating the dynamic and resilient nature of the crypto industry. Lastly, we bring you an update on the legal battle between Custodia Bank and the Federal Reserve. This fight highlights the ongoing integration of digital assets into the mainstream financial system and the potential implications for the future of digital asset banking. In a significant development in the world of digital assets, Custodia Bank made progress in its legal battle against the Federal Reserve. The bank filed a lawsuit against the Fed in June of 2022, alleging an unlawful delay in the processing of its application for a master account. This account would enable Custodia Bank to use the Federal Reserve's payment system, the Fedwire Network. The Fedwire network processed over 196 million transactions in 2022. The case took a turn when a federal judge in Wyoming denied the dismissal actions from both the Federal Reserve and the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. This decision was welcomed by the Custodia Bank. Its spokesperson, Nathan Miller, expressed satisfaction that the Federal Reserve's attempt to veto the state banking chartering decisions, he would now be tested in federal court. Custodia Bank was founded in 2020 by Caitlin Long. No stranger to TradFi, she's a former executive at Morgan Stanley and an early supporter of Bitcoin. The bank's mission is to provide account services for crypto companies and to act as a bridge to the United States dollar. The bank's application for a Federal Reserve Master account was submitted in October of 2020. However, in January of 2023, the Fed denied the membership application. 
They said the application was inconsistent with required factors under the law. They specifically pointed to the bank's involvement in the crypto space as the reason for the denial. Again, Operation Choke Point 2.0. This decision was a setback for Custodia, which was one of Wyoming's first special purpose depository institutions, also known as blockchain banks. These institutions were established to serve businesses that could not secure Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation banking services due to their involvement with crypto. In April, the state of Wyoming requested to intervene in the case between the bank and the Fed, defending its framework that allows certain crypto firms to qualify as state chartered banks. This move by the state underscores the growing acceptance and integration of cryptocurrency in the financial landscape. According to Nathan Miller, the Federal Reserve is reinterpreting federal laws to grant itself special authority that it never received from Congress. He stated that the Fed never held such authority in U.S. history, that it doesn't need discretion to block banks that have already been chartered by state banking authorities. Miller also pointed out that Custodia received its bank charter after more than 150 prospective applicants were rejected by the Wyoming Division of Banking, so it's not like it was an easy process. He expressed anticipation for the court's review of what he termed as a power grab by the Federal Reserve. This case represents a significant moment in the ongoing integration of digital assets into the mainstream financial system. This outcome could have far-reaching implications for the future of digital asset banking and the broader acceptance of cryptocurrency. As the case progresses, all eyes will be on the court's decision and its potential impact on the evolving landscape of digital finance. Tonight, we explored a series of impactful stories that shed light on the evolving regulatory landscape and challenges the crypto industry faces. This ruling against Dukidao serves as a precedent, indicating that decentralized organizations can be legally held liable for their actions. This decision has significant implications for the future of DAOs and decentralized exchanges, emphasizing the importance of regulatory compliance within the crypto space. We then turned our attention to Nigeria, where their Securities Exchange Commission took a firm stance against Binance, ordering the exchange to halt its operations due to a lack of registration and regulation. This move highlights the regulatory challenges faced by crypto businesses. It underscores the need for clearer guidelines and collaboration among regulators to protect consumers and foster a supportive environment for the industry. In the wake of SEC lawsuits against major exchanges, Robinhood made the decision to drop support for certain cryptos. This reflects the regulatory uncertainties and complexities trading platforms face as they navigate legal actions and advocate for clearer regulations to provide customers with a more secure and confident trading experience. And lastly, we explored Custodia's legal battle with the Federal Reserve, which holds implications for the integration of digital assets into the mainstream financial system. The outcome of this case will shape the future of digital asset banking and could have far-reaching effects on the broader acceptance of crypto. These stories collectively highlight the need for regulatory clarity, compliance, and collaboration within the crypto industry. As governments and regulatory bodies grapple with regulating this emerging asset class, it is crucial for enthusiasts and market participants to stay informed about regulatory developments that shape the industry's future. The crypto space continues to evolve, and it remains vital for all stakeholders to adapt to changes while advocating for a balanced regulatory framework that fosters innovation and protects investors. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating or maybe a review. And don't forget to enter the contest. Comment on last month's cover video. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.